Hey guys, I have this uh, Holly 4150 here that's in a million pieces and I was planning on putting it back together but figured why not just shoot a video doing it. So um, this particular carb is not going on any of my engines or in any of the vehicles. I just picked it up as more of like a fun little project to do. So yeah, let's just get into it. All right, so I bought this carburetor off of a follower on Instagram and he let me know that this is a 750 CFM mechanical secondary unit, but unfortunately the choke was milled off at some point. So I don't have the list number and I don't have the date code, but because it's a 4150 model, I went ahead and ordered Holly's trick kit here. This is part number 37-485, and this is gonna have everything that I need to put this thing back together. But before I even do that, the very first thing that I like to do when I'm rebuilding a carburetor is uh, make a little stand for the throttle plate. So I just use 5 16th bolts and nuts, and that's just to keep the weight off of the linkages, but you can use like carb spacers or whatever you have available. Now it's time to just open up the kit and pull out some of the gaskets. So move this over there. Okay, so I just sorted through the trick kit, separated all the gaskets, and the first one that I'm gonna grab here is the one that goes between the body and the throttle plate. So just gonna line that up like this and then grab the body making sure the primary is with the primary side and just let it locate itself and then I'll flip it upside down and start screwing in these screws. Now I'm just gonna snug these all down. And what I love most about working on carburetors is that you literally need like three or four tools to take these apart and put them together. Uh, like a Phillips head, a flat head, uh, sometimes you'll need like a 5 16 socket for the um, fuel bowl bolts. And then I also bought one of Holly's jet tools, which I'll show you later. And that's just so I don't um, destroy the jets in any way. Plus I do a lot of carburetor rebuilds. So I figured it was just like worth the investment. It wasn't even that expensive. I think it was like 15 bucks or something, maybe less. <laughs> All right. Okay, so. The main body is on now and we can start on the primary side. Whenever I'm working on a carburetor, I like to keep my primary parts completely separate of the secondary parts and that's just so I don't mix anything up or get confused later on. But um, before I get started on the primary side, I just wanted to confirm that this was in fact the primary metering block. And the way to do that is you can see on this one, it has a provision here for the power valve, whereas on the secondary side, it's blocked off. Now, this won't be the case on all 4150 models, but on this one, that was just a clear, easy way to tell them apart. So now um, I'm going to get started here on the fuel bowl. This might be a little tricky to show here, but I'm just going to install the float now. Just press that in, make sure it's lined up, and then take the screws here. Where's my flat head? Now I just need the gaskets and the fuel inlet valve and seats here. So gonna... I struggled a little bit off camera to get the um, fuel valve inlet and seat assembly all situated here, but now that it's not going anywhere, um, you can invert your fuel bowl and then using the adjusting nut, you want it to sit at just about halfway 
and then lock it down with that um, locking screw. So just like that. And then your float level is set. Now it's time to move on to the accelerator pump. So um, this fuel bowl has uh, a check ball in it. So I won't be needing the little umbrellas here that I usually use for the accelerator pump. So what I'm gonna do is take the accelerator pump diaphragm that I got from Holly in the trick kit and take the spring and then you're gonna put this together here and then I give it like just a few pumps like that just to make sure it's all good and then carefully you got to kind of hold it make sure it's all lined up and then take the actual uh, pump lid here and then just get the screws to fall into place and making sure that the pump arm obviously is to the um, outside you don't I've done it before where I like rotated it and didn't realize it so don't make that mistake usually just test it again just give it a couple clicks here it feels good so that there is the primary fuel bowl this is done and now we can take the primary metering block and install the jets and the power valve so I don't have a jet kit but I'm just gonna be using the jets that came with the carburetor and uh, running 70s on the primary side, and then there's 80s for the secondary. So I'm just gonna put these in, like very loosely, thread them in, and then use my Holly Jet tool to like snug them down. So grabbing that, it looks like this, by the way. So if you plan on doing a bunch of uh, carb rebuild it's it's worth the investment just like that I mean you, you can get away with a flathead it's just I you'll, you'll damage them it's not worth it okay now I'm gonna grab the new power valve here and get a new gasket for it just like that just like that. I mean, you should probably use a wrench to like snug it down, but I don't have one on hand, so I'm just going to hand tighten it. Like I said, this is not going to be run on anything, so I'm just kind of putting it together. Now I'm going to grab my blue gaskets here and put the entire primary side together. So, using those little pins to locate it on that side and same with this side. Get that on there and then just let it locate itself here on the body like that. Take the fuel bowl, line that up as well. And then I already put the gaskets on the bowl screws, so don't worry, I did not forget those. I've done it before and then had to take everything apart. <laughs> loosely getting these in and then I'm going to take my 516 socket here and just snug these down.
I already went ahead and put the pump lever on off camera just because I was struggling a little to get the uh, retaining clip in, but that is all done now. So as you can see here, it does in fact pump. So now we can move on to the secondary side. I'm gonna grab my fuel bowl here and my secondary metering block and do the exact same thing. Uh, only difference is, as I mentioned, this side won't have a power valve. So I'm gonna start with the float. Put that in. Just loosely get the screws in to hold it into place and then tighten these down. Now I'm going to get the gaskets for this part. So I'm going to set up the uh, fuel inlet valve and seat assembly and try and not struggle too much because there's a couple gaskets here and they tend to fall out of place. And then loosely putting on that locking screw and I'm going to invert it again make sure that doesn't come apart <laughs> you got to just be really careful here so there we go so now keep twisting that start to see the float moving now. Just to write about there looks good. And then actually it could go a little more. Right about there. Okay, now I'm gonna take the flathead to lock that down. And then now I'm gonna go on to the accelerator pump here. So where did my diaphragm go? Grab the spring, line it up here. Okay, now I'm going to put the jets in the secondary side. Like I said, just like loosely threading them in. And then taking the poly jet tool here. those down okay now I'm gonna grab the blue gaskets here and also make sure that I don't forget to put gaskets on the bowl screws I'll do that really quickly because it's easier to do it now than when I'm trying to hold the whole secondary side together so just slide those on Perfect. And so now we're going to do the same thing. So 
line up the blue gasket like this. And like this, just making sure it's completely flat. There we go. And then letting it locate itself here. And then this part's a little tricky. So taking the lever arm and now the fuel bowl. You want to have make sure that the pump lever is underneath there and then hold this all in place don't let it move and then just start to get these in there just like that Then take the 5 16th and snug these up. Just like that so that is the secondary side and I realized I did forget something on the primary side but that's okay it's super simple so um, best part about carburetors is however they came apart is how they're gonna go back together so if you find that you have extra parts laying around like these um, idle mixture screws here you know you forgot something so I'm going to uh, grab the gaskets for these. They're like these little cork ones and put them in the primary metering block. It's not a four corner idle, so it doesn't have them for the secondary metering block, but just gonna put this here. Lightly thread it. Do the same on the other side. Sorry if this is hard to see. I just don't have the camera set up close enough. And then take a flathead. And when you're setting your idle mixture, um, when you're putting it together, I should say, you want to screw it all the way in. You don't want it like super tight, but you just want it all the way in and then you're going to back it out. So let me get these down first. Okay, so... The idle mixture screws are um, all the way seated down, and then I'll back them out about um, a turn and a half. So that's one and a half. And then do the exact same to the other side. Those sides are both evenly set. Uh, last thing to do is the uh, squirter nozzles here and the needle and seats. So I just gotta find the gaskets really quickly and then we'll install those. Okay, so I'm gonna take the needle and seats, drop them in, then take the first gasket here and then grab the squirter with the discharge nozzles. The secondary side doesn't have them, so I'm just gonna 
seat that like this. So, yes. Perfect, get that lightly into place. Same with the secondary side. Perfect. Now I'm going to take a Phillips head to tighten that down. And that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, there you have it. It's a whole complete unit now. Um, like I said, this particular one is probably not going to be used for anything. Maybe in the future I'll get it dialed in on the run stand, but it's a really nice clean carb. I just love collecting them. I can honestly never have too many carburetors, but this thing's looking really good. So that's it for this video, and we'll see you guys next time.